and steroids they containing one or more hydroxyl groups known as sterols so the normal fasting serum glucose uh, sorry the normal fasting serum cholesterol level ranges from 150 to 200 milligrams dl okay 150 to 200 milligrams person to person this is a normal reference range okay okay it is synthesized in our body using acetyl coa as a precursor okay a cholesterol exists in free form or in ester form so any fatty acid attached any fatty acid attached to the cholesterol that is known as cholesterol ester okay and excess of uh, cholesterol is uh, obviously harmful because it starts getting in the arteries okay of the heart and causing the atherosclerosis not only uh, in the heart other uh, other arteries other arteries okay in the circulation and causing blocks okay for the blood circulation okay so the narrowing of the blood vessels okay and reduces in the blood flow and causing thrombosis so it may occur in the brain it may occur in the uh, other parts of the uh, circulation in the body functions so already we can make out the functions they are maintained in the normal level and has number of good effects that's what i said don't think cholesterol is a uh, bad one okay it's a precursor for sense of bile acids in liver steroid hormones like uh, cortex sex hormones gonads all are coming from cholesterol and cholesterol from 70 to cholesterol in the skin when your skin get exposed to the sun okay the sunlight irradiates the 70 to cholesterol uh, which is present in your skin okay and uh, this 70 to cholesterol transported to the liver there is enzymatic action on 70 to cholesterol and it converted to vitamin d2 and finally it reaches to the kidney again one more enzymatic reaction okay and it forms vitamin d3 that is cholic alciferol okay which is required for bone metabolism calcium metabolism okay and uh, properties of cholesterol to talk about it's a poor conductor of heat and hence it acting as an insulator okay cholesterol cholesterol is abundant brain and nervous tissue where it uh, functioning as insulating and uh, covering for the structures for the brain especially brain and uh, nervous tissue okay and which is helpful in transmission of nerve impulse okay amphipathetic lipids so by the name itself you can say amphipathetic lipids which are insoluble okay amphipathetic means lipids are insoluble in water okay this is primarily due to hydrocarbon groups okay hydrocarbon groups some of the lipids possess polar or hydrophilic groups which tend to be soluble in water okay because of the hydrophilic heads those lipids are soluble in water otherwise lipids are insoluble okay and example for amphipathic lipids fatty acids phospholipids sphingolipids bile salts and cholesterol they are all amphipathic in nature that means insoluble in nature so orientation orientation of amphipathic when amphipathic lipids are mixed in water okay what happens okay when these amphipathic lipids like fatty acids cholesterol or uh, otherwise like uh, sphingolipids bile salts when they mix with the water so what happens to them so what happens when they come in contact with the water all the lipids i mean water soluble or water loving heads expose outside and uh, making or packing water hating tails inside so literally to say they form micelle formation okay micelles okay that means all the water loving heads will be outside and water hating tails will be inside so this micelle formation is very very important okay first to get digest the lipid they should be formed in micelles okay they should be formed in micelles you see here when come in com contact okay so they will form a micelle so lipid with the water they form liposome okay this liposome is a prominent one to get digest and absorb the lipids properly in the gastrointestinal tract that's all about lipid chemistry okay thank you